You struggle with life when you ignore life. Actively engaging in a belief system is an act of ignorance because you must distract yourself from the present moment and ignore the present moment in order to imagine a situation other than the one you're actually experiencing, here and now. Belief is mental imagery superimposed on what's right in front of you. Movies can only hold your attention when you ignore the screen that they're being projected onto. Beliefs are mental movies. The challenge with letting go of your beliefs in favor of your direct experience of reality is that reality doesn't try to comfort you. Reality is simply what it is. This means that when circumstances become challenging, there's nothing there to lean on or to hold your hand. So why on earth would you not side with a nice comforting belief to help you weather the storm of life's difficulties? Because weathering these storms keeps you intact, keeps the resistance identity in place so that you are still in opposition to the flow of life once the difficulty passes. When you accept reality as being enough, then difficult circumstances will always work to strip you, your identity, of any inauthenticity, any ugliness, anything that suggests that reality as it is, is not enough and should be changed. Remember, the moment is what's real not you. When reality becomes enough, you are no longer needed. That's when the constant suchness of every unfolding moment shines through like a thousand diamonds. Reality is what's beautiful, not your beliefs about reality. The attachment to belief runs deep. After all, when you first enter the world, beliefs are how your consciousness tries to make sense of its surroundings and find its place in them. Over time, as you adjust to being in the world, your beliefs start to merge with the identity that's been forming from your identification with the body and its thought processes. Eventually, an intricate and highly complex me starts to develop which acts as a conduit and filter for all future beliefs to pass through. While this fundamental me may be highly complex, it's nevertheless a fiction and could be revealed as such upon close examination through direct self-inquiry. Simply ask directly, what exactly is I or me? Immediately, you're given an answer, which is that there is no answer. There is no one there to answer. Consciousness, after all, is not a person. It's no thing that's aware of its no self. If you allow it, this simple discovery can become the doorway to a fully self-realized, liberated state of consciousness. As it happens though, we humans tend to have a hard time allowing simple truths to flower. That's no accident, of course. After all, your very identity, me, is based upon a refusal to allow truth to be as it is. Not allowing truth to be as it is means having to complicate reality. Complicating reality means no longer living in the moment that you exist in. Me is how we justify ignoring the present moment. How we justify ignoring reality all the time. Understandably, your life has to be put on hold when your identity continuously demands that you find proof that it's okay for you to be here. Your identity is both a blessing and a curse. 
a blessing in that it allows you to function more easily in a world made of other identities. A curse in that who you really are is not an identity. The essential building blocks of your identity began at birth, but the predominant structure of the supposed me has been heavily influenced by those closest to you, mainly your immediate family. One of the most unhelpful tendencies that you've inherited from your family is the need to be rewarded and avoid punishment. This tendency takes time to fully notice and can be one of the trickiest ones to let go of since it infiltrates almost all of your actions and drives almost all of your goals and ambitions. Unfortunately, being raised through reward and punishment has also made you more susceptible to other belief systems which also use reward and punishment as a tool to hold your attention and influence your behavior. Think almost every religion. If that's hard to believe, just ask yourself honestly. How much of your behavior in life is fueled by the need to avoid failure, condemnation, and rejection? Or rather, how much of your behavior is fueled by the need to succeed, gain approval, and be included? Peeling away the layers of self-deception can seem incredibly terrifying at first because it's all you've ever really known. After all, What's left after you no longer need success and acceptance from the world, or even from the other world? Wouldn't you become an outcast from society? Wouldn't your family and friends no longer know how to talk to you? Wouldn't you lose that special place that's reserved for you after you die? It's a fragile exchange of unworthiness that holds together most worldly social connections. So rocking that boat would indeed mean your gradual expulsion from normalcy. In any case, why did you pick up this book to begin with? Wasn't there something inside of you that was ready to be done with all of the BS and suffering? Waking up to reality is an epic life change. It's all consuming. To be on the path of truth means that your life will not be separated into different types of experiences anymore, but instead will become one experience everywhere you go. In other words, you won't just devote a certain part of your day to waking up. Your whole day, every day, everywhere you go, is now going to be about waking up. This means that tucking your tail, biting your tongue, and keeping the peace can have no place inside of you anymore. 